and when we analyze that why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why has he created us it is because we are the best of creations we have an option of either obeying him or we have the option of disobeying him if we obey him we become superior to the superior than the angels if we disobey him we become like the satan and this life allah says is a test for us i started my talk by also quoting one more verse of the quran of surah mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2 allah says allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata li yabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala your death and life allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds allah has created death and life to test which of the human beings are good in deed so this life is a test for the hereafter Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 185 Kullu nafsin zaikatul maut every soul shall have a taste of death your final recompense will be on the day of judgment and whosoever has been saved from the fire and has entered the garden of paradise he has achieved the objectives of this world for verily this life is goods of chattels and deception allah says in the quran in surah baqara chapter number 2 verse number 155 be sure we shall test you with something of fear or hunger or loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toils and give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere allah subhanahu wa taala has created this life for us and that as a test to test which of the human beings is good indeed and surely allah will test you with fear with hunger with loss of goods with loss of wives and what you have earned in your full life the fruits of your toils he will test different people in different ways allah says in the quran in surah anam chapter number 6 verse number 71 that allah subhanahu wa taala bestows his sustenance more freely on some of the human beings as compared to others allah says in the quran in surah anam chapter number 6 verse number 165 that he has raised some of the human beings in higher ranks above others and he has bestowed gifts on some of them so that he will test them so if allah raises you in ranks and gives gift to you bestows bounties on you be prepared allah is testing you allah says in the quran in surah anfal chapter number 8 verse number 28 that your wealth and your children they are a test for you the wealth that almighty god has given you the children that almighty god has given you they are a test for you allah says in surah munafiqun chapter number 63 verse number 9 let not the love of your wealth and children take you away from the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala allah says in the quran in surah ankabut chapter number 29 verse number 2 do not think just by saying you believe allah will let you go and allah will not test you so just by saying i am a muslim i am a believer i am a mu'min allah says in the quran don't think that allah will not test you allah will surely test you 
and only if you pass in the test will you get paradise. Just by saying I am a Muslim, I am Muhammad, I am Zakir, I am Abdullah, will not take you to Jannah. Allah will surely test you. And if you pass in the test, then inshallah go to Jannah. What are the criteria for a person to go to paradise, for a person to attain Jannah? And the answer to this question is given in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, where Allah says, Wal Asr, inna al-insana la fi khusr, illa lazina amanu, wa amilu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqq, wa tawasaw bil sabr. By the token of time, Man is verily in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who do righteous deeds, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. For a person to attain P3, he has to do P4. P3 is First P is the pleasure of Allah. To attain the pleasure of Allah, peace in this world and paradise in the hereafter, to attain these three P, you have to do four P's. The first P is the purity of faith. Second P is piety, righteous deeds. Third P is propagation, inviting people to truth. And the fourth P is patience and perseverance. Invite people to patience and perseverance. For any human being to attain the pleasure of Allah and peace in this world and paradise in the hereafter, he should have iman, righteous deed, that is purity of faith. He should have amal salihat Righteous deed, piety. He should have watawa sawbil haq. He should do watawa sawbil haq. Invite people to the truth, that is, do propagation. And watawa sawbil sabr. Invite people to patience and perseverance. To attain three P's, you should follow the four P's. And there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi It's mentioned in Sunnah Tirmidhi, Sunnah Tirmidhi, volume number four, chapter number sixty, hadith number two five one seven. Anas, Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that once a man, he asked the Prophet, should I tie it, that is my camel, and trust in Allah, or should I leave it, leave my camel or trust in Allah? The Prophet said, tie it, tie your camel and then trust in Allah. That does not mean that you leave your camel and then say that I have got trust in Allah, I have got trust in Allah. You can't leave your door open and then say, you know, I have got trust in Allah, no robber will come. You have to close your door and then trust in Allah. Trust in Allah is important, but also following the guidance of Allah is important. And for success, trust in Allah is the most important. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 160, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If Allah forsakes you, who is there then who can help you? So let the believers put the trust in Allah. Allah says in Surah An-Kabood, chapter number 29, verse number 69, that if you strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will open up your pathways.